Hey guys, Jim here, and hold on to your seats, bitches, because we're going to be taking a look at another Marfion Custom Sigil, but this time, a little bit different. Now, you've seen several sigils on my channel uh, over the past couple of years, uh, going back to the original collaboration between Tony Marfion and Derek Monroe with that little uh three and a half inch version of the sigil and the very first one that i got happened to have been a prototype that i got at the blade show uh, i guess that was what 2014 yeah 2014 and love the knife it was incredible it was the apocalyptic finish it was the first finish that they had uh, released at the time uh, then they also put out a carbon fiber version uh, at the same time and we've seen a lot of generations of that knife, and I've owned four of them, uh, from that one to uh, an all-satin titanium with a hand-rubbed satin blade, blued hardware, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, of course, the 24-karat uh, gold engraved dragon with the mirror polish blade. You know, it was you know over forty-two hundred dollars. That was a major investment for uh, for a knife like that. And then there's another one that I is just escaping my mind right now, but. Unfortunately, um, I've gotten rid of all of my sigils, and I'm going to tell you why in just a couple of minutes. This one, however, um, man, God, this thing is just, it's just fucking incredible. Let's take a look at the packaging. I've not done a Marfion unboxing in a little while. I want to show you guys that haven't seen it before how they come packaged. First off, here is an indication of what's inside the Sigil Mark VI DLC finish and a two-tone stone wash, and that does refer to the blade, then DLC stone wash uh, titanium frame with a carbon fiber plate, which by the way, what a great touch, I love that carbon fiber plate. Serial number, and of course, made in the USA. We get the magnetic flap opened up, inside is the Marfion dagger, uh, and it's going to be important, by the way, that you look for the dagger symbol on these, because they just started releasing a Microtech production version of the Sigil Mark VI. So the first indication as to which one you're looking at when you're shopping online uh, will be the dagger versus the claw. The claw would be the uh, Microtech version. Inside is the zippered case. We'll get to that in a moment. You get the microfiber cleaning cloth with the, uh, the Marfion dagger embossed into it inside of this plastic sleeve which we will go ahead and take out is your certificate I love that certificate of authenticity Sigil Mark 6 DLC two-tone stonewash finish and the M390 steel oh dear god uh, all that kind of good stuff it was birthed in uh, December of 2016 so she's a fresh one baby and it's number 13 uh, inside here is uh, a stupid fucking warning because of the state of California. I swear to God, you guys would ban fucking oxygen if you could. Uh, that's just my personal feelings. Not a big fan of the state of California. Love the people who live there. I'm not knocking you if you live there. I think you're kind of, you know, insane with all the shit that's going on that you'll actually continue to live there. But I hear it's beautiful. All right. Just not a fan of the, uh, <laughs> the policy makers there. All right, so we have the zippered pouch that has the uh, Marfion dagger right here. If I can get it turned around to show the camera. Um, these come on all the Marfion customs now. And what a lot of people do, and what I've actually even done before, is, is take this off of here, tie it onto a lanyard, and uh, put that on as a lanyard bead on my knife. As always, super high quality packaging. Uh, you have the, ah, uh, get back here. You have the Marfion dagger here. You can stick it to the outside. Um, you can stick it to your hat. You can stick it to your ass for all I care, but it is Velcro backed for your pleasure. We get the microfiber bag out, which I love the redundancy here. You get a microfiber polishing cloth and you get a microfiber bag, which is in itself a polishing cloth. So you can never complain uh, if you run out of polishing cloths for your knives or for your eyeglasses because uh, because Tony hooks you up maybe. All right so here is the knife in all of its glory four minutes into the video somebody's gonna bitch about that oh, it took him four minutes to get the knife out. This is hands down my favorite execution 
of the new sigils. Matter of fact, when I saw Tony a couple of weeks ago at the New York Custom Knife Show, he had one of these sitting there. He probably had more, uh, but by the time the show opened, it was only one left sitting on the table. And uh, I said, yep, got to get me one of those. The black is badass. They do a very good DLC finish, and their DLC will allow you to see the finish that's done to the material underneath. It's not like doing a Duracoat or a Cerakote, where you don't really see... I mean, if somebody did a mirror polish underneath, you wouldn't see it, because it's just a coating. Um, think of it like a paint. But you couldn't do a mirror polish, because you need that Cerakote, Duracote, whatever, to adhere. So you typically do a very rough bead blasting uh, in order to adhere it to it. With the DLC you are able to see satin finishes, stone wash finishes, mirror polish finishes uh, done very very well and you'll see that here on the two-tone blade so you've got a stone wash finish on the blade but it's got a polish to it so it's got a nice degree of reflectivity and you can see that through the black finish I love that now, DLC is going to be the strongest coating that you could put onto your knives. Diamond-like carbon coating. Listen, I'm not going to bullshit you. Any coating, I don't care what you're using, apply to the finish of a knife or a firearm or anything that's uh, going to be dealing with friction. It's going to be dealing with uh, touching other things, rubbing on other things. The coating is going to come off at some point. But it's up to you to decide how long that's going to be, A, through how you use it, and B, through how much you spend. If you get a cheap, standard coating, then it's going to wear off really fast. And there are some great comparison videos on YouTube from custom knife makers who have tested the durability of different coatings. DLC is going to perform the best with Cerakote right behind it. So... If you're looking for an all-black knife, which includes your blade steel being black, because you can blacken titanium, but you can't blacken steel. So to get the all-black look, the most durable way to do so is in DLC. I love the fact that they chose to use carbon fiber here. It keeps up with a stealthy look. A lot of times you're going to see Tony doing really nice contrast work. You know, something like this would look really good. You know, maybe with a Damascus or a blued, ooh, a nighter blue Damascus plate with blue hardware all the way around. Yeah, that would look pretty badass. But I liked this in the stealth look that it has. So instead of having Damascus or titanium or whatnot for the over travel plate and pivot plate, he's done it in carbon fiber. Really looks slick. All of the hardware is also DLC coated. Now, you might be wondering, what is the Mark VI? What's the deal? Why is everybody talking about um, this particular version right now? Well, I'll tell you. The original sigils had a couple of things about them that people weren't fond about, to put it kindly. Um, number one, some people just went, it's too small. Even though it was a three and a half inch blade, it was one of the smallest, most compact overall three and a half inch knives I've ever owned. Now, I happen to have liked that. It was a really nice size. I've got plenty of big knives. It was nice to have that as an option. But the two things that were pretty special about that knife and they were things that were not in Derek Monroe's original designs of the sigil, these were really Marfion touches, were the subframe lock and a completely flush mounted pocket clip that you pushed on the butt end of it and it would pivot upwards and it would, it would retract by a spring. It was a really awesome concept. Unfortunately, that's the reason why I sold all four of mine. Because it had to have a pivot the clip went like this. So what happens is it's nice and wide here and it gets narrower and narrower and narrower toward the pivot. That's how it's going to work. Well, unfortunately, in a pair of jeans that has a thick lip around the uh, pocket, that sometimes didn't allow the, the knife to go in enough to be secure and it was tilted out so far that it didn't have a lot of tension. Um, mine had come out of my pocket more than once. It generally happened uh, with my seatbelt in my car. And I really felt insecure about that. I kept finding myself doing pocket checks all the time, just touching my pocket to make sure my knife was still in there, or doing this, just to make sure it was pushed down all the way. 
And especially with my dragon and gray version, you know, that was over $4,000. That's not the kind of thing that you want falling out of your pocket at a McDonald's parking lot or something. So that really kept me from enjoying them to the fullest. The thing is, I would own one, sell it, miss the shit out of it, and within a few weeks, buy another one. That's how much I loved the design. I loved the feeling of flipping it. I loved the shape, the futuristic design. I found myself to be rather addicted to it, but I just couldn't get past that one little thing. So now, the biggest change for me is the fact that it has a standard pocket clip. Yay! It actually makes it easier to carry. Um, I told Tony when, uh, when this arrived, I said, I'm going to carry this for a few days before I even sit down to make a video because I really want to be able to answer that question for people. Is it that big of a difference? Yes. It's funny how you go from something advanced to taking a step back to the standard for it to become amazing. Now this is an amazing knife to carry every single day. It's still narrow. It's still slim. Even has the same blade thickness as the original. But now it's actually a better EDC knife in a larger size. That's right. The original had a three and a half inch blade. This one is 3.875. So that doesn't sound like it's a big difference, but it really is. When you hold this knife, it is significantly larger than the original sigils. Uh, cutting edge on the original is 3.375. This has a full three and three quarter inch cutting edge. Fan freaking tastic. Makes it more useful. Close length on the original was four and a half inches making it extremely compact. This isn't a huge jump. It's 4.875 inches. Still very pocketable, very EDC friendly. Overall length on the original was 7.875 inches and this one is 8.75 inches. So yeah, eight and three quarter inches. That's a pretty substantial knife. It now makes it a full sized folder. Blade thickness has been uh, 157 thousandths thick, and that remains from the original to this one. Obviously, it goes down very, very thin, thanks to Tony's hand grinds, his hollow grind, beautifully executed, razor, razor sharp edge. And you'll notice I keep wiping it down. It's only for your benefit so that you see a pretty knife here on camera. Um, that's the only thing about the DLC finish. It will pick up fingerprints the oils from your finger. So yeah, uh, it's going to be nice to have the microfiber cloth because you can do that little wipe down and uh, help it look like new every time you pull it out of your pocket. For most people, that's not going to be an issue, but um, just want to let you know why I'm obsessively wiping this down. Now, the reason for the change on the lock bar was, unfortunately, because of Kai USA, the, uh, the parent company to Kershaw. <laughs> They claim that they created the subframe lock. I shouldn't say that they created uh, that they have a patent on the subframe lock and that nobody else can do it. Well, we know that other companies did it before Kershaw, before Kai. We know this. Um, and as far as I know, and I'm not going to make any guarantees here, but I do know that Tony had uh, rounded up some of his earlier models. Because remember, he dates everything. He puts an engraved date on his knives. And as far as I know, the models that he made predated what Kai did. But the thing is, listen, Kai beat everybody to the punch, and they registered it. They patented it. They trademarked it. They put all these things on it to protect it. So they didn't have to be first to make it. They were just the first to protect it. So, um, you know, they sent Tony a letter. says, hey, stop doing this shit or we're going to sue you. And they sent it to other people as well. And, you know, Tony's got a mega business here that he's got to protect. He's no dummy. So he says, you know what, fine. It's going to fucking kill me because that year he didn't take a single folding knife to the blade show. He couldn't because he had to remake all of the lock sides to do into a standard integral frame lock but like I said he's a smart guy he says I'm not gonna I'm not gonna battle them it would probably cost more honestly in legal fees that it's even worth whether you won or lost so 
He just says, fuck it, I'm just going to go back to a standard frame lock. And you know what? It's great. It works every bit as good. Is it as technical looking? Is it as special looking? No, but it doesn't change the functionality at all. And the look of the knife still is fantastic, whether it's a separate lock or it's an integral lock to the side of the frame. Doesn't really matter. So that's the big difference is it's going to be the size of the knife. Now it is larger. For many people, it will be more useful. Uh, it has the standard clip and it has a standard integral frame lock. Still has the same great customized hardware. I say great because it looks good. You might not say it's great because if you want to take your knife apart, you have to figure out a way uh, or buy a very expensive tool in which to do that. I really don't have any issues I've had to take my sigils apart. As you see, this one is perfectly centered and built wonderfully. Any maintenance that I have to do on it, I'm going to blow out with compressed air. If I get anything that's really jammed up in the bearings, you spray WD-40 in there, you blast it out, you blast it out with compressed air until it's perfectly dry, work it out, and voila, you have a nice clean set of bearings. That's the easiest way to do things. You don't need to take your knives apart to do that maintenance. You certainly can if you want to, and you should have the option if you want to. But listen, how many times do we knock an expensive custom knife because it has cheap generic hardware. You can't have it both ways. You can't say if I'm spending a thousand dollars and these are just a touch over a thousand dollars, if I'm spending a thousand dollars on a custom knife, it damn well better have custom hardware. Well then when you get it you go, but if I'm spending a thousand dollars on a custom knife, I damn well should be able to open the fucker. There is a way to have, have it both ways. You know, at some point, you know, you could buy the tool and you can do it yourself. Um, listen, Tony doesn't want you opening up his knives and fucking shit up. How many times have we seen knife makers on Facebook belly aching about knives they get back from a customer that that customer has taken apart to clean or do standard maintenance and couldn't get it back together right? The blade is so off-centered that now it's scraping the inside of the frame, scratched up their satin finish, they're pissed off. You're a shitty knife maker. No, you just shouldn't be taking my shit apart. Um, so Tony takes that extra precaution. He sells a lot of knives, not just his custom knives, but thousands and thousands and thousands of production knives. Imagine the customer service dollars of getting a percentage of those back every single year because somebody screwed it up. Most knife consumers are not knife guys like we are, and they shouldn't be taking their shit apart for any reason. So that's just my uh, two cents on the subject. I like the cool hardware. Um, I think it really adds to the overall flavor of every knife that he makes. One thing I didn't show you was the backspacer. There is the engraved backspacer. Uh, has the model name, the Marfion dagger, the birth date, serial number, and the signatures of both Tony and Derek right there. Overall, I think that this is 1,000% a winner. Number one, I love the all blacked out finish. We're waiting for more finishes. I think the only ones that have been come out so far are the apocalyptic finish and this one. Uh, I think actually they called it the fallout finish, my apologies, and the DLC. And you know what? They'd be crazy to not make a thousand variations. So I'm sure you're going to start seeing a lot more coming up with mirror polishes and satin finishes and two tones, maybe tritones, and crazy anodized hardware, and different uh, plates, and all kinds of neat stuff. So, if you've been a fan of the sigil, but for some reason something has held you back, whether it was the diminutive size, or it was the, uh, the pocket clip that you heard about from your friends, now there's no reason to hold back. Now there's no reason not to put one in your collection. For me, it's just one of those knives that's addicting. I can't stop going back. And now that the fatal flaw for me, and again, some people have had no issues. I'm not knocking the original version. But the fatal flaw for me is now gone. So I can feel free to collect several in the series over the next couple of years or however long he makes them and enjoy the shit out of them. But for right now, I'm enjoying the stealth version, acting like I'm a ninja or some kind of super tactical dude which I am not, but I love that look. 
and as you see it matches my uh, my Ed Brown Cobra carry nicely black on black on black on black oh it looks like I did get some marks on it from carrying it for those few days but hey that's okay right wink wink nudge nudge oh dear god look at that it looks like something like some kind of spacecraft out of an alien movie all those hard sharp lines all blacked out. Holy shit, the tip of that blade is sharp as hell. You know what? I just noticed this. I do believe the lanyard opening is larger in the backspacer. I don't know, but it looks larger. It looks like I can fit 550 paracord through there with no issue. With the originals, uh, that wasn't the case. You would have to gut your 550 paracord to get it through there. So this might be a nice option for a cool lanyard bead. Oh, yeah. If you're into that sort of thing. Some people are. Some people aren't. So there it is, guys. In all her glory. In full HD. Soak it up and enjoy it. And uh, grab yourself one. And for the first time now, if you're looking at this going, man, I just, I just can't drop a thousand bucks as much as I like the knife. Now there's going to be a production Microtech version. And you know what? It's going to be every bit as cool. Okay, it's not going to be hand ground by Tony. Uh, it's not going to have those certain little features to it. But I'm sure you're going to save a lot of money. I don't know what they're going to sell for. If I were to guess, I'd say in the three, four hundred dollar range. I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that. But you know, now more people are going to get the chance to to own this design, and I think that's pretty fucking rad. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you all for watching, as always. By the way, um, if you don't follow me, please do so. Follow me on Instagram. I have recently changed my Instagram handle to reflect uh, what's going on in my life. Uh, it's now Jim Skelton Knives. Very easy to find. Follow me. Uh, if for nothing else, horribly offensive and inappropriate jokes uh, on pretty much a daily basis. And, of course, photography of knives and discussion of knives and more offensive things to, uh, to, to not show your wife. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll catch you on the next video.